Alright, so the holidays are over even though we still have our tree up. Uh, we will be taking that down here shortly. So, uh, but there's a reason we still have the tree while we have it. And that is because although Christmas is over, New Year's, a new year has started. Do you realize, Cor, we have not made a video at all this year? We haven't made a video since last year. Feels like it's been forever. Uh, we did take last week off. So, um, I want to thank you all for joining us. The reason, like I said, though, that we have the tree up is because... The movie we are watching today is going to be Lethal Weapon 2. Although it is not a Christmas movie in any sense of the word, like um, Die Hard or the first Lethal Weapon, which has a lot of Christmas stuff in it, this movie does have an actor who was in something Kor really loves to watch around Christmas time. That we, yeah, somebody from Home Alone is in this. So I'm curious if you're going to spot who it is. If you're going to recognize this person's face. And they're going to be a pretty big part of this franchise moving forward. So, going back, Corey, you didn't really care too much for the first Lethal Weapon. Why? I have to ask questions, and you have to answer them. Tell the viewers, why didn't you really care for the first one? You remember the first one? No, I'm glad. Why? It's a really good movie. Uh, so, basically, in the first one, Martin Riggs is um, a police officer who is on the verge of... Uh, killing himself because uh, his wife who he was married to for a long time was killed in a car accident and it drove him over the edge because now he's all by himself and he gets teamed up with Murtaugh a older cop who uh, is on the verge of retirement and Murtaugh just wants a nice, quiet, you know, time until he retires. But they get, he gets a call one day that uh, a friend of his daughter had killed herself. And uh, they want him to investigate it. So it turns out that she didn't kill herself. She was poisoned. So had she not jumped, she would have died anyway. 
And uh, he gets teamed up with Riggs, and Riggs is just crazy. Honestly, my favorite part of the first one is when uh, he goes up to talk to the jumper. And he's like, I'm just going to stand here and talk to you. And then he puts the cuff on the guy. He's like, yeah, well, if you jump now, you're taking me with you, and that'll make you a murderer. And the guy's all like, you're crazy, man, you're crazy. I'm going to jump. And then he goes like, do you really want to? Do you? <laughs> and then they have that nice big, like, balloon thing below them to catch him. I love that scene. I think that's, like, one of the best in that movie. But actually, I actually like the movies the more they go on. Especially with all the new cast members they all end up bringing in. So, I, I think you're going to love this one. I really do. You like action movies. And this one's got more action. More craziness from Riggs. And this one is actually quoted a lot and referenced a lot in other movies. Please be a lion nut or a scene from Make Swigs because that's probably the only action that I probably like. I don't know. On this channel, what's the mark? And plus, this has a lot more comedy once they introduce the guy I was talking about from Home Alone. He's kind of the comic relief of this group. See, before they were making kind of Riggs the comic relief, but, you know, he's too much of the action star to just be comedy all the time. So they needed a new guy who was going to be just straight-up comedy for the two. And he's just funny. So I, I can't wait for you to watch this. I think you're going to really enjoy it. I know this is one I really enjoy. And, uh, so yeah, let's just jump right into Lethal Weapon 2. Why? Come in. Police, open up. How do I know you, police? After I shoot you through the door, you can examine the bullet. Open up. Mel Gibson. Danny Glover. Come on, let's go, Roger. Oh, no, we shut it off. Don't be a Don't be a cute job. Come on, we're back. We're bad. You're black. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. I'm mad. No. Now, get ready for something lethal. I'm surprised you haven't heard about me. You know, I got a bad reputation. And sometimes I just go nuts like now. <laughs> because the magic <laughs> is back. Why can't you make it? Me down. Yeah, I'm going to follow down. Shut up, I'm seven floors up. Lethal weapon, too. You go first, I'm really chill, but then you go first, I'm coming. Ah! Amy, Amy, Amy. 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 Lethal Weapon 2. This time, they're not taking any crap. He's getting up my man. I don't want anybody to see us like that. All right, Cora. So, you just finished Lethal Weapon 2. Um, so, generally, did you like the movie? Had more explosions and stuff than the first one. Kaboom! Did you have a favorite scene? Did you have one scene that you really liked above all the others? Like maybe the toilet scene? Dad just drove to me for outside the land, and I call him probably be dead. And that poor car, that brand new car, sit down. That brand new car was nice and new at the start of the movie, and by the end of the movie, looked like it was like 50 years old, falling apart. Sit down. So. 
Who's your favorite character? Come on, you gotta answer. I don't really know. You don't know who your favorite character was? What? I mean, we had some pretty big revelations, though, in this one. Um, we learned, you know, a little bit more about Riggs' wife dying at the beginning when they were talking about his pen. And he thought it was just a car accident. But it actually turned out that she was assassinated because Riggs was getting close to the guys who were doing the bad stuff in this movie. And they put a contract out to kill him, but he wasn't with her that night, and so she ended up dying instead of him. Um... So that kind of resolves, brings to a close, that chapter for Riggs' story. Because it's kind of been there since the first movie that, you know, he's suffering because of his wife, the loss of his wife. But now we can close the chapter on that part of his story because, and allow the character to move on because he got closure realizing that it wasn't just an accident it wasn't his fault which is what he really blamed a lot of you know is that he was too busy with work he was too busy for her and that was weighing on him more than anything but finding out that his wife was killed was murdered and being able to take out the person who killed her will now allow the character to move on so, maybe we'll get something really good for him in the next movie. So, uh... Yeah, like, when they first... Two, when the two first saw falling in love, I thought, oh, he's actually gonna get a new life, and he's going to actually we be good. And I always speak out all the time. And I mean, yes, she might still miss her old wife, but at least now she has a new wife, but it turns out it's wrong. Nope. She died too. And the jacket she was wearing kind of looks like similar to your jacket, your Stranger Things jacket. Nope. <laughs> it's not. It's just the same colors. White and blue. Dark no, blue. No, I'm talking about on her jacket. The one that she was... That he gave her that she died in. That his girlfriend died in. She was wearing a jacket just like that. That was white and blue. Similar to yours. Was that like... All the pictures in that? Well, they didn't have all the pictures. I think it had a number on the back because it was a sports jacket. But anyway, so what character did you recognize from what Christmas movie? Home Alone. And it was Home Alone. It was who? Home Harry? Yeah, Harry. Who's Home Alone? <laughs> I don't even know what you said. Did you like that scene where uh, Murtaugh came in and they were like, I want you to convince my friend not to go to South Africa. Listen to your friend. He knows what he's talking about. Did you like that scene? It's pretty funny. No, and I'm, a, and I'm having a candy cane. Okay. We're going to be taking it down anyway, so. You get all the candy canes now. So, alright. Well, we will be right back after these quick breaks. Um, I got the one you got, the one for my book series will keep running, at least for a while, until I come up with another one. Um, 
and I've got another ad I want to run and I just want to say um, thank you so much and if you guys have any suggestions on what we can do to make these videos better um, or these ads better because I'm unfortunately I gotta show the ads so I mean it's the only way a way I could put ads in and get the word out about my stuff so yeah and there's probably gonna be ads in this anyways because YouTube has eyes like yeah. Any video you watch, of course, have ads, so you gotta see ads anyways. Alright, so we'll be right back, and when we come back, we'll be doing our final score. Bye. Bye. Hello there. I promise we'll get right back to the video shortly. I just wanted to say that many writers, YouTubers, readers, and gamers often talk about one thing that they all share in common and that is drinking coffee and perhaps you're tired of going out and ordering expensive high-end coffees and cappuccinos from huge corporations and are looking for a way to have that same or better coffee brewed right in your own home so I want to ask that you consider trying coffee brand coffee you can order from an array of different blends that will be delivered right to your door. And if coffee is not your thing, they also have teas, cocos, and chocolates. Why am I doing this, you may ask? Well, for a long time now, I have been a fan of a channel called The Quartery, which is constantly reporting on the news, and the head of the channel, Jeremy, has worked really hard for his viewers over the time I've watched this channel. He has done so much helping out others and smaller channels, working hard to make several videos a day, which I can tell you does take quite a good amount of work. And recently he started his own coffee company. So if you're willing to try and change to a better coffee, tea, or K-cup because you need that sweet caffeine fix to get you through writing that next novel, reading that next book, playing that new video game long into the late hours of the night, or starting off early in the morning for a long live stream, then head over to the website for Coffee Brand Coffee or check out the channel the quartering and see what delicious specials they have going on. For thousands of years, the world has been protected by the Guardian of Light, or as he is more commonly known, Santa Claus. Over the centuries, factors such as fear and prejudice, greed and jealousy, misunderstandings, Betrayal and war have segregated most humans from the magical world of elves, fairies, wizards, and the like. This has resulted in many misconceptions and generalizations of the true nature of Santa and his world. This six-book series by Sean Connaughton begins as the current of a long series of guardians is murdered by a group of monstrous enemies recently escaped from an enchanted South Pole prison. These creatures are loyal to the darkness an evil force determined to exterminate the light in order to enslave all creatures of the world. Shane Connor, an average young man, suddenly finds himself being trained as the new guardian. As he adapts to his new life among fantastic creatures, he goes on an adventurous quest with a legendary wizard for the ultimate weapon to use against the darkness, and faces murderous enemies like Rasputin, Morgana Le Fay, Krampus, and many more. Along with his best friend, Joe Gomez, Shane encounters politics, history, mysterious murders, new loves, his own hidden past, and racial dynamics among the fantasy races that turn out to be all too real. Their adventures reveal the true nature of the world and challenge the current state of how all races interact. This series expertly melds myths, legends, history, faiths, folklore, and secret societies into a fascinating, cohesive, comprehensive world of wonder and magic. From Atlantis to Olympus, from Hades to the moon, and from broomstick races to Christmas deadlines, 
Join the new Santa Claus on his amazing journey. But beware. Will Shane's quest achieve his ultimate goal of destroying the darkness and preserving the light of the world? Or is he actually playing right into a plot by dark forces that will result in his, and our, ultimate doom? So make your list and check it twice for the Guardian of Light book series. Download your audiobook or ebook today from Audible, Amazon, or iTunes. All right, so we are back. And uh, since this was a daddy pick, daddy's going to go first. Of course. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10, I would give Lethal Weapon 2 a 10 out of 10. Of course. I really like this one. Personally, I think this is probably the best one in the franchise. Um, we might do a ranking video after we finish all the Lethal Weapons. But yeah, I definitely think this is a... Uh, I mean, this one and the first one are kind of neck and neck for me. So yeah, I mean... I like the first one. It's good around... Uh, Chris, you know, right before Christmas time. Get you started on that... Christmas spirit and the Christmas movies, but I like to pick up the series after the fact. If I watch this in November, then I like to come back and at least finish the other three movies after. Kind of like with Rocky, you know, if I watch Rocky 1 in November, then I like to come back and watch the rest of the Rocky franchise after the fact. Um, but yeah, um, Cora, your turn. On a scale of 1 to 10, what would you rate Lethal Weapon 2? Um, a 9 out of 10. 9 out of 10? Yeah. Yeah. Was there anything, like I asked earlier, was there anything you really liked? You know... What scene? At the end. When they were doing doing the fighting, or or when he goes diplomatic immunity, and then Murtaugh shot him. Yeah, I like that scene. Like. And that one guy who Riggs was fighting, he's gonna be a lot shorter now, huh? Since he got flattened by that container? Yes, yeah, like probably even more shorter than the other was a guy. Yeah. Yeah, like probably this short or even more shorter. He's gonna be like a pancake. But like even more flat or like a pancake, like a stickman, but that's a flat. Yeah. So, uh, did, uh, you like Leo Getz, Harry from Home Alone? Yeah. Was he pretty funny? A lot of fast talking stuff. I know every time, I, know, I heard you laugh every time they both, you would yell at him, No! <laughs> Maybe I should have a gun. No! <laughs> no! <laughs> would you let him have a gun? All right. Well, this is going to wrap up our premiere first episode back from break, back from the holidays. Uh, we want to thank you all so much for watching. And we will see you all next week. I don't know what next week's video will be quite yet. But we'll either be doing The Little Mermaid or Lethal Weapon 3 or Aladdin. One of those three. So we'll see you guys later. Bye.